Hello, hello everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. I'm gonna give a few minutes here for people to hop on and see how uh, we're going to do things tonight. I'm gonna get a few things together right here as uh, we start this journey so that I can show you things better. go over things with you. Okay. Well, it's six o'clock and no one has joined yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and start and you'll be able to go back in and watch this again, so it'll be all right. My name is Kay Terry, and uh, the name of my page is Kay Terry's Treasures. And I decided to um, do this Sewing Basics 101 to get everyone um, that is interested in learning how to sew, uh, acquainted with the things that they're gonna need. And today's lesson is just an introduction to the course, and I'm gonna tell you a few tools that you should have on hand. And one of the, one of the very first things that I can think of that everyone needs when they're learning to sew is a cloth measuring tape. This will help give you more um, accurate measurements and you need accurate measurements when you are sewing. Hi, Stacy. Thank you for joining us. I've just started. Um, another thing that you will need when you're learning to sew is uh, you're gonna need some some rulers, some different types of rulers. Um, one of the rulers that I use a lot is this little um, one inch wide ruler. I use this for all sorts of things, but I use it the most in my bag making because it also has rivet placement guides, how, how far apart you want them. You can use that and make sure everything is uh, together. Plus, I have a lot of need for one inch measurements a lot of times for strips and things. I have a square ruler that has got a lot of uh, measurements on it. And if you want to do quilting, I suggest you get a square ruler that has all the markings on it. Depends on what you're wanting to do, what kind of sewing you're wanting to do. I do intend to um, teach everyone from the basics, from hand sewing to machine sewing and further. Then I have this ruler, which it looks pretty, pretty worn out because I, I use it all the time, especially in bag making. But... Um, I don't know if you can see or not. It has all kinds of degrees on here so that you know if you're wanting to, to do different um, angles that you can cut from. So I've shown you all that. Okay, and then uh, you can get a sewing kit. Uh, I can link some on if, you, if you'd like. Uh, my daughter gave me one for Christmas, and uh, it's from the Pioneer Woman, and it comes with um, a yeah, pin cushion, and you always need some pins and different needles of different sizes because you need them for different things. It's always good to have packs of needles. I have this kind. I have this kind this kind. I use a lot of things. Okay. 
Um, another thing that you need is a dedicated pair of scissors to cut fabric only. Don't use them for anything else. These are the best scissors I have ever used in my whole life. I'm 60, almost 67. In just a few weeks, I'll be 67. And this brand of scissors is absolutely the very best. Hey, Kathy. Thanks for joining me. And I will, I will definitely link um, I, the Amazon link to the video after I'm finished for this where you could pick up those if you if you prefer them. It doesn't have to be these, but I'm just telling you, if you want a good pair of fabric scissors, they're great. Okay, um, you might like to have as a starting some small little clipping scissors that you can keep by your sewing machine or by your chair or whatever, wherever you're sewing because I'm always needing them and I don't want to use my good fabric scissors on that. Another thing that you need is a pair of um, pinking shears. And these pinking shears are very old. They belong to my grandmother and I still use them today. And they're great for when you're making something that has rounded curves to trim down the seam to help the seam open up so that you can press it and it will be smooth. So everybody should have a good pair of pinking scissors. And let's see what else I can tell you about. Oh, even, even needles when you're sewing that have big eyes. I use this when I'm threading something with yarn. So that's something else that I use. And one of everyone's favorite tools <laughs> if they're a sewer is a seam ripper because everyone, I don't care how long you've been sewing, I don't care if you're the most professional seamstress there is, you're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna put something together that shouldn't be together, or you're gonna use it to undo what someone else has sewn that you're doing alterations for. You need a seam ripper, and you want a good one, and you want, a, a, want one that's very sharp, but not real pointed on the end, because if it is, you can tear things that shouldn't be. So that's another thing that you need. Another tool that you're gonna need is we call this a thing. <laughs> it, I think it's called the blue, the blue thing. Um, I'll link I'll links uh, to it too after this. This is for when you turn things, you put this into your fabric to get the points turned out. Like if you're doing a square or you've got something that's pointed, a collar that has a point or purse, whatever it is you're making, you're going to need something to help you that isn't sharp, but that can turn those points out. Um, it's a great tool. You need one of those. Then you always, not always, but you might want, if you're like me and you can't see very well, you might want a needle threader. This came in the kit that my daughter gave me um, at Christmas time, and gee, I've got a bunch of them. But what you do is you put it, the end of it, into the eye of the needle, like that. You can see my, thing. you run your thread through it, and then you just pull that back out and your needle is threaded. Okay. Another thing, and this is something I've just learned over the last two years, um, is that in, not just pins are necessary, but maybe you might like clips instead. I, ha I have started using clips. I use this kind of clip. It's great for holding uh, layers of things together. You just mash it down, clip it, hold it in place. It does a great job. You're not gonna get stuck with by a pin when you're sewing. Um, it's easy to release 
by laying your hand on it and mashing down and pulling it out as you're sewing, you'll get into doing that. I have them in the smaller one and I have them in a larger one. So if you're doing something really thick, you want the larger ones. Then I've also used hair clips. I buy these at the dollar store. They're cheap, but they do the same thing. Really thick, you want a big one, not so thick. Does the same thing. Doesn't put put holes in things like if you're working with vinyls or leathers or things like that. You don't want to put pins in it. You want to use clips. Another tool that I use all the time is this little um, gauge. And I use this when I'm doing hems. It has everything marked out in per inch and all the other marks in between. And this just slides. So if you're wanting to change, like you want to make a hem on something that's one inch up, you can take this and go around and and you can press it with an iron, have it in there and press it with an iron or whatever. It's just really great. And uh, this is a tool I would recommend also for anybody that's beginning sewing. Okay, I'm, I'm putting all the things I've talked about back into my little case over here. You want to have a pair of scissors. I've already told you to have a pair for fabric only. You want to have a pair of scissors that's for cutting out your pattern, that's for paper, that's for um, um, anything else that you need to cut other than fabric. So everybody needs at least two scissors, pairs of scissors. And then I have other things that I use Maybe you don't need it for beginning sewing, but depends on what you're going to what you're going to want to do. You might want to add these as we go along, and there'll be other tools that I'll show you as we go along. Because it's not just about sewing; it's about crafting. It's about all kinds of things. So I have these little pliers that I use, and I leave the plastic. You can take the plastic on or, or off, but I leave the plastic on, and this is for. Um, like when you're doing key fobs and things like that and you need to put uh, the ends on and you don't want them to be marked up. So you leave the plastic on and then you can mash them together with your fabric and let it get a good grip and, and hold very well. That's, that's a good tool to have. Another tool that I use a lot is this little Japanese hole punch. And I will use that um, when I'm marking uh, darts and things from my pattern. And I'll show you how to do that when we get into discussing how to read a pattern, how to lay out a pattern, how to mark your fabric from the pattern. You will need a hole punch. Um, I suggest this one. Um, it's called the Japanese hole punch. I found it on Amazon. I'll place a link later. Okay. You want... An air erase marking pen. This is the one that I use all the time. Found it on Amazon. Um, it's great to mark your fabric with anywhere that you need something marked. And it, it goes away in just a little while. It just, it just goes away. So if you're not going to be doing something immediately with it, you don't want to, to put the marks. But if you are, you do. I also have... Um, chalk pens. I have several different kinds. I have pieces of Taylor's chalk that I've used. It's just a way of marking something. Hey, Brenda. Uh, there's somebody else on here, but I don't know who it is because their name isn't showing up. But welcome, welcome. And I have also got um, colored markers that wash away like you can just put some water on it and it goes away these are these are great little markers to have um these are choco pens and um i also use this fiskers um blade it's more than 
just a, a blade to me. I use it on really heavy threads to like a seam ripper very carefully um, going in and just touching it to the threads to help remove threads and I'll pull it out and I'll do that again. But I use this a lot in bag making and when I'm putting in zippers and things like that where I have to cut through layers of fabric. It's just a great little tool. It's a great tool to have. And I would suggest suggest one of those. But like I said, you can buy a beginner's kit of basic sewing supplies that will get you started. And as you develop what it is that you want to sew, if it's quilts or if it's clothing or if it's um, wallets or handbags or or whatever, and we'll discuss all those things, and I'll do tutorials on all of those things if there's something that you want to see later on. Um, but the very beginning things that we're gonna talk about, like I said, are hand sewing tips. There's so many people that I have found that don't know how to sew a button on, don't know how to fix a hem, don't know any of these things, so we're gonna discuss those things First, we're gonna show those things first and then we'll move on from there. But tonight, this is just an introduction. Here's something else that I needed, never thought about needing. But when I do bag making and when I do embroidery, I use um, a polyester blended thread or a nylon thread. Um, it's a stronger thread to use. It helps to keep things together better. And we'll talk about threads and stuff in another segment, but I use these. And I, this is the one that I had first. And I'm not used to using the lighter for anything. So, um, but these, you can do your thread ends where you, clip. sorry about that. I don't know how to put this on do not disturb. So we'll, we'll try it. <laughs> And it keeps, they're just calling back. So here is what you do with that. If you have this up and you're doing this, I am so sorry. I will have to learn how to do the do not disturb. I hope it didn't take anybody off. But I like this one better. Um, I think they call it a torch. And why I like it the most is that I don't feel like I'm gonna get burnt when I'm using it because I have all this space between my hand and the fabric. So this is my preferred lighter, but anybody can get any kind they want, but make sure it stays with your sewing supplies. And if you've got a smoker in the family, you definitely don't want them to know you've got it because it'll be gone. Ask me how I know. Believe me, I do know. And also, something that I use later on, but not necessarily in the beginning, is hole, uh, it's a leather hole punch. This is great for all kinds of things, putting in um, snaps and grommets and rivets. And I have other, I have other tools too, but like I said, I'll get into those a little later on. Mostly, this is just an introduction and letting you know some things that you might want to gather before we get into a lot of things. And next week, I'm gonna, I hope to be able to do this on Mondays. I finally got my, my internet figured out. Uh, had to call Comcast to get that taken care of. And uh, they told me what to do. So now if it does it again, I know what to do. And another thing that uh, we're gonna be doing this next time is going to be talking about are sewing machines and what kind of sewing machine is good for what and how to thread a sewing machine how to change tension on sewing machines how to fix tension on sewing machines and I can go over a few things like that with you all and if you have more questions I'll be happy to go into it more in depth but we are just starting out on this phase, and today was, is my first thing, and believe me, I am not um, anywhere near professional on doing a video, uh, but I do hope to get better as time goes on and not feel quite as 
nervous and anxious and making sure I'm saying something that you need to hear. <laughs> but uh, I do hope you'll join me next Monday at 6. I'm going to try to do these on Mondays at 6. And they're going to not be very long. It's just long enough for you to get the idea of what you need. And then as we progress, we will do a project together. And then we'll do another project together. Each one a little more difficult as we go. But I would like to know if there's anything specific that you would like to see me make. I know one of the first things we made in Home Ec was a skirt. Well, we can do that too. But I'm thinking I'm going to even go more basic than that. I'm going to do like um, a quilt block or a... Um, a tote bag that just has straight lines on it so that when you're practicing sewing, when you're done, you're going to have something you can use. So I want you all to let me know things that you're interested in making so that I can help you with that. Another thing that we're going to be studying um, on is I'm going to teach you how to read a pattern. What every little thing on that stands for so that you know okay great i want to teach people how to like i said to sew on a button how to do a hem how to sew on a, a hook and eye things that seem to not be known anymore and i felt led to do this and god uses us in ways that we don't really think he will use us i have found that out throughout my life but when you get a feeling and it just keeps coming back and nagging at you then you better know it's the Lord pushing you to do it so that's why I'm doing this I felt the need I felt the calling if you will to do this so I may not be the greatest teacher in the world I may be real plain and hick and country and all that stuff, but that's just who I am, okay? So, I'm thinking somebody needs this and somebody's going to get a blessing from it. And hi, Jennifer. And um, I'm going to do not just sewing, but all kinds of crafts. Um, I think it would be great. I want to do a monthly um, interview with other crafters that do specific things and if it's something you want to learn to do I want to connect you with people who do that particular craft all the time and can help you learn it um, I know how to knit some I know how to crochet some so I could get you started on basics but I couldn't ever help you all the way through because that is not my expertise but I want to have different people to help me with different things. My sister-in-law, uh, Sharon Terry, I've already talked to her. She's going to be my first person that I interview. She is with Chalk Couture. And she is going to take us through a project when we get to that point. And uh, help us to learn about Chalk Couture and the, the decals and stencils that they use. And um, how to do everything. So... I hope that this will be something that um, will benefit all of you. And I hope that all of you have a wonderful evening and we'll, we'll meet again on Monday. And as I said in my introduction, if any of you read it, uh, it's that every thread weaves a story and every story tells a tale. And you'll understand that more and more the more things you make. And I can, I can tell you that I know that's true and that, that sewing has been a God-gifted talent to me. I have sewn so many things for so many people for so many different reasons. And all those stories are still in my mind and in my memories and will always be precious to me. But I wish each of you a wonderful evening and I will see you back. And may God bless each and every one of you and may you have the best night ever. Thanks. Bye-bye.